Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are gonna be discussing what I am actually doing during the summer for school for my kids. So in the past, I have made these videos of all of my summer school plans, and it has never worked out well, and it always kind of felt like a weight of things that I was not doing. So I decided not to do that this year, but instead I wanted to kind of loosely plan what I wanted to do, and then see what I actually did. And so that's why you're not seeing this video until July because I wanted to see how everything played out. And now I can share with you what we've been doing, how it's been going, and it's been a good combination of stuff. So let's just hop into the video because I have quite a bit to share with you all. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel or welcome back all the things. And so like I said, we're gonna be chatting through what we are actually doing this summer for school. And I put those in air quotes because it's not necessarily just academics. It's all the things that I can't necessarily get done easily during the school year, but really still matters to me as well as some academic things. So there's really two categories I'm gonna be focusing in on today. Some basic life type things that we are using this summer to work on and work out kind of our plan for. And so for example, that being things like a safety, safety unit. So it's hard for me to find time for a safety unit, but yet I think it's important. And wrapped up into the safety unit, I'm gonna be talking a lot about like body safety, early puberty, good pictures, bad pictures, kind of internet stuff. And so we're bringing all of that in, and this is a new thing for us. My oldest is nine and a half, so it's just definitely on the horizon and what we need to focus on. So kind of safety stuff as well as chores. So in the summer is when we practice our chores. This is when I think through what I want them to be working on, how I want them to be helping, and we do the practice of the chores in the summer. So that's kind of life stuff that isn't necessarily school, it's kind of school. But then there is also the academics. And in this case, we're talking to keep going with some math facts as well as all the reading challenges we're doing. There's three I'm gonna share with you today. And so those are really the two kind of concrete categories of our summer school. And of course there's extra stuff. There's lots of play, there's lots of swimming and pool time. My son is doing extra coding on the computer. He's been really interested in like writing graphic novels. So there's all these things that are happening, but I'm not, intentional or scheduling. The things I'm talking about today are more of the intentional things. So like I said, safety is a big one. So I have the old, like this might be their first edition of the safety unit from the good and the beautiful. And I like it. I like it better. I looked at the new stuff and I could have spent another $60 and got all the new stuff, but for what I need it for, this is perfect because I don't need student workbooks. I don't need journals. I don't need any of that. And I already had this prepped from like years ago when I went through this for the first time with my big kids when they were maybe like seven and six, something like that. So we didn't even go through the whole program because like the last three units wouldn't have made sense for them. So like they weren't gonna be home alone. We were not allowing them in the kitchen and there was no like internet or peer pressure at seven and six years old. But some of those things have changed. And so now I'm bringing it back. We've done a couple of the units. So I actually have myself a little schedule here which I know is kind of impossible to see, but this is where I kind of lined out all the different days I'm gonna be doing these units because I wanna do it before we go for our kind of big annual trip back to see my family. And so I wanna kind of have all our school done because after we get back, we're probably gonna be gearing up to start school up again. So I have myself a little list and we've gone through like fire safety, water, electricity safety. We have things like earthquake safety as well as the, the body books. And so this program is, it's really exactly what I need. Like for instance, here's the first lesson on fire safety. There's things to read to your kids and discuss and practice. So my kids are at the perfect age for this kind of stuff. I have a nine year old, an eight year old and two five year olds. And so we can talk about scenarios for if there's a fire, what do you do? And what I like about this version is it has all of these little activities and things you had to cut out and I just put them in page protectors. It really was not that difficult so I can keep using this. And my hopes are to use this every summer to kind of do a refresher on what they're supposed to do if there's a fire. And we even made a fire safety escape plan where we're supposed to meet up, how they're supposed to get out. And we did different drills for like, well, imagine if there's a fire in the kitchen. Well, my nine-year-old downstairs can't go past the kitchen to get to the front door. So he has to figure out another way out. And so those are kind of basic safety things like water, all the things. But this also includes some important safety things that 
need to be talked about and just kind of the current culture. And so you're talking like body safety books. And so like I said, we're doing kind of body safety as well as puberty, but I have again, five, five, nine and eight year olds. And so there's books that we can all read together. Like for instance, these are the body safety books that we have always used. I can link them below. They're really solid resources. Like this one is the I Said No, A Kid to Kid Guide to Keeping Private Parts Private. That's really important. And then this one is A God Made All of Me, a book to help children protect their bodies. So these are very appropriate for the five-year-olds, but the older kids can also get really good information out of them. So I am going to be reading these books to all of the kids. And then I am taking on some extra stuff here and it's not found in like the safety unit from the good and the beautiful is I'm taking on these books. So these are the story of me books. And so these are the God's design for sex books. And there's the story of me before I was born. What's the big deal and facing the facts. So I actually have the first two and this first one is geared for ages three to five. So I'm going to read this to all the kids. It has a lot to do with kind of like where babies come from questions like that. And then the one that is before I was born was for five to eight year olds. That one involves a little bit more explanation, body parts, some specifics about sperm, egg, things like that. And so my husband is going to be reading that book, which he has it. That's why I can't show it to you. He's going to be reading that book to my son either at night, but we're going to tag it to that fourth week in the safety unit. And we're just tagging it on. I think it's just kind of hard to, find the time, not find the time, but just get geared up to have some of those conversations. But my son is very ready to talk about early puberty and some of those things that are going to happen to him. And so my husband might just be taking him on a special like father son date sort of thing, go through that book, chat through some of the things, and that'll be the plan for kind of handling some early puberty type stuff. So body safety, and puberty, early puberty books are kind of on the docket for this summer. And I think it's just a good time to do it. We're just a little bit more relaxed and we don't have as much structure. So it's a good time. And then we're going to move on with our safety unit. Like I said, there's kitchen home alone, which is just great to be able to have some of those discussions for what you would do if you're home alone or at what age are we going to start practicing some of these things or giving you a little bit more space to be home alone, to practice us. If maybe we're just like 10 minutes away, stuff like that. So we're going to have some of those discussions. And then the very last one is internet safety, which is a big thing in our house right now, because I am in the process of setting up a computer station in our homeschool room for a variety of academic reasons for the upcoming school year, but also because he really enjoys coding and he has been really enjoying kind of coming up with his own characters. Like he'll download them off the internet. Maybe it's like a Harry Potter game and he wants like Harry Potter. And so he has to go get an image and things like that. And so it's just, it's time. We are not a huge technology media type family. And so we're just now kind of getting into it and trying to set up some family guidelines and rules. And so we are in process and I don't have all the decisions made on that yet, but it's important to talk to them about what to expect on the internet, how to avoid things. And so I think this is a great place to start. And then I also have picked up this book which is called good pictures, bad pictures and what to do. I feel like, yes, we homeschool and yes, they're not like around kids with phones all the time, but the neighbors have phones and this, it's just a reality of our life. And so we want to be the people who speak into our kids' lives about this, who share with them what is going on. The fact that there are bad pictures, there are bad things on the internet and what to do and how they can pre-think these scenarios to better protect themselves and give themselves options and plans for when it does happen, right? I feel like it's going to happen at some point, hopefully not for a while, but I want to have a lot of these conversations before that happens. And so we can catch it. So anyway, that's all kind of our safety, body books, internet safety, all the things is what we are working on this summer. So that's been a big part of our summer school. So now let me shift you into kind of the more academic stuff. And so the only things I have really are to keep up a little bit with math and do a bunch of reading. And it's been great so far. So as for the math, because it's very easy, we supplemented a bit with a Becca math this year. And so we're just continuing with those worksheets. There's speed drills as well as a back and front on both of their levels and it just keeps the math 
in their heads. It keeps them like practicing some of the skills of like, oh right, you carry the number when you're adding multi-digit numbers and all of that. So they just do a sheet a day. It's very low key. It's just part of our routine before we go to say the pool, because that's been a big focus of our summer. They have to do their hygiene chores, which is just like make their beds, brush their teeth, get dressed, as well as these few academic things. And the other thing I do have for my son is to finish out the typing program. It's mostly because we got a little bit behind on it and he wants to finish it. So we're just doing another lesson at a time. He wants to finish up typing one from the good and the beautiful. And so, those things and reading and the reading is where it's really fun and i have them signed up for three different book challenges which i love and so those challenges are first off the barnes and noble one we do this every year i feel like their book selections are good enough to find something that my kids would like i mean there's like owl diaries unicorn diaries princess in black things like that that my kids there's enough things on here that my kids would find something good. And so we just are following that. So basically we're doing a bunch of reading and then we're tracking it in multiple places so that they track it in their Barnes and Noble, they track it on their Sunlight Stacks graphic here, and we're a little bit behind, but they basically put the titles in and the color of the books. And end of the summer, you take a picture and I think you get like a free t-shirt here, which is kind of fun. And you get a free book obviously from Barnes and Noble, but the big one we are doing is the one through our library. And our library just has always a good one. So I'm gonna show it to you real quick. Our library goes through, it's the Beanstack app, but it it's all set up through them. And basically you record their reading. So it's like, say if it's for my son, we would record his reading. Like you would, you would click to say, okay, he's been reading. And you'll say, all right, I'll pick my son and choose the readers and then, I have all the books here scanned in what he's reading. So it's like Spiderwick, which is currently what he's reading. Then you log the reading. So last night he read, I think he told me he read like 10 minutes at bedtime. And so I'll just log that and then it adds to his log. And the whole challenge is based on how many minutes read and it has kind of a halfway prize and a full prize. And so he's about, He's like 150 minutes in or something like that. And at the 250 mark, he gets a free book. And then we go to the library and the books are behind the desk and they get to pick out a free book. It's so much fun. And then if they make it all the way to the end, they get a free aquarium ticket. And so that'd be just fun. It's a fun way to celebrate kind of at the end of the year because we've been doing nighttime reading and drop everything and read or deer. And so we get at least two times a day where they read for like 10 to 15 minutes. And the other thing I did for them is I had a kind of day, an exciting day at the very beginning of the summer when we picked their readers. So like for instance, here's the stack my daughter is working off of. Some of them are just kind of like some basic ones. We had some leftover from Sunlight Level 2 readers that she wants to read, in, but we also had some of these other history readers. So she knows she can read these. She also has some that she is excited about, which she's been reading through the Princess in Black books. And we have a, a number of other kind of random ones. So these Chicken Squad ones she can read. We have some of the Little Bear books, the Hey Jack books. So she read the Billy B. Brown books. And so I think these are through Usborne. And then my son had the Hey Jack ones. And so she just borrowed these from him. And then here's another one from the Sunlight Level 2s. And these two are also Sunlight Level 2 readers. So I did want her to get through the Level 2 readers because she's going to be starting up Level 3. And she can definitely read these at this point. But then she found a book when she was picking out presents for her birthday because I just, I'm tired of all the toys. So I told relatives they could buy her books or like jewelry and stuff like that. And so she got like 10 or 12 books for her birthday this past week. And so she's so jazzed. But this series was the one she was most excited about. And she's like halfway through this first book and it's called The Never Girls. This first one's in a blink and she's really liking it. And she can read it really well. I mean, it might be just a skosh hard for her, but it's not like terribly hard. She's really enjoying it. And so it's fun. It's kind of a mix of ones like that I picked and I want her to get through and then ones that she's really jazzed about and that she's really enjoying these series and she's collecting the series. We use books a lot as celebration around here. Like if something is needing celebrated, sometimes we just go to Barnes and Noble to celebrate it. And so those are the books for my daughter. And then let me show you the books that my son picked out. 
and she just turned eight and he is nine and a half. And so he's currently reading this one. So this was the book he picked for his end of year celebration when we went to Barnes and Noble, the first book in the Spiderwick Chronicles and he's really enjoying it. It's got crazy pictures. He also enjoys a lot of these ones. So he put a lot of the I Survive books on his stack as well. Both the graphic novels and just the regular ones. We got these at like a library book sale. And so he likes the I Survive books. So he does enjoy nonfiction as well. And then he has this series he's working through. So the last of the Firehawk. So this is a branches, a scholastic branches book series, the last of the Firehawks. He likes the boxcar children. They listen to these a lot on audiobooks, as well as magic Treehouse books. He has some options. And then I picked up, these were the extra five day readers for the level three program through sunlight. So he's in the middle of level three right now. So he's reading through a lot of the level three books, but these are some of the extra ones and they're just small chapter books. And he really liked the third grade detective books when we read it through sunlight. So I picked up these ones cause there was a few more of those. And so he has some really good options and it's fun cause we just keep this in a stack. And so when they're all done with something, they can come and they can put it on all of their sheets and then they can pick from their stack and obviously they can pick anything else. It was just a day where I got to build a lot of enthusiasm for all our reading that we're going to do this summer. And so those were just the things I really wanted to keep on our kind of everyday routine where it was the reading and the math. And then that's it. We're not doing anything extra. We're, we were finishing out some of our read alouds from sunlight, which we've already done. And we're going to start our annual tradition of reading one of the Harry Potter books a summer and we're on to number four. So I guess that's another thing we're doing this summer. That's our read aloud plan. So those are the things we are doing this summer. Those are the things that are getting done. I didn't over plan. I didn't put too much on my shoulders. I was just trying to meet my kids where they're at to use some things that are helpful. Even if like I say wanted to keep going with logic of English, I didn't want to lose that those skills. I just put that aside. We'll pick it back up. These are the things we can do and it still allows us to rest and reset and also get in some important discussions like safety because I'm not always the best at being like, oh right, let's just talk about what you would do in a fire. I like having the resources. They like having those little activities, hands-on activities, and then we get to talk about it. And then they're always telling their dad the, that evening what they have learned safety-wise. So they can tell him what the plan is, what they know, things like that. So it's really good. I would say this is my favorite summer school approach we've had so far. And I'm really glad I gave it kind of the end of May, early June to kind of settle in with what our plan was and how our routine was going to go. So let me know down below. Do you guys summer school? Do you totally take it off? Do you do a little bit? I would love to hear from you because it's just such a hard decision as a homeschooler, isn't it? I feel like you don't want to let things slide, but you don't want to overdo it and you still want to rest. So let me know down below how you guys handle all of this. And otherwise, I will see you all in the next homeschool video. So have a wonderful day. All right, take care.